Good day, everyone, and welcome to our next informational interview with a PCC staff member. I'm Jen Tomlin, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Bob Farron, Director of Golf Course Maintenance for Pinehurst Resort and Country Club. Bob and his team do a fantastic job keeping the Pinehurst properties and our golf courses in tip-top shape. The Golf Committee and Board of Governors frequently receive questions from members about things that are going on with the golf course maintenance. So today, Bob is here to answer some of those questions. I hope that you enjoy it and find it informative. To keep things safe while not wearing a mask, only one of us will be on camera at a time. You will hear me in the background asking Bob the questions. If you have any questions or concerns after reviewing this interview, please reach out to Dave Gibbons, the 2021 Golf Committee Chair, Betsy Mitchell, the Communications Chair, or any of the other Board of Governor members. So without further ado, please let me introduce Bob Barron. Bob, welcome and thanks for speaking with members today about the important topic of course maintenance. So the first question I'd like to begin with is how large is the maintenance staff including your direct reports? Well, we have, um, I have 11 direct reports. Uh, we essentially have a superintendent for each, uh, for each of the golf courses, as well as a manager, operations manager that I depend a great deal on. Uh, included in this as well as our ground superintendent, and we have a service center manager that many people don't realize that we, uh, our department also uh, takes care of all the transportation vehicles and the vehicles that go to and from the airport and the shuttles and all that. So that's a little bit of a disconnect from what my normal skill set might be, but, uh, but we do have uh, the great resources to do that. In addition to my direct reports, we have uh, about 225 full and part-time employees. Um, a great deal of them are part-time employees, but we work uh, in the neighborhood of 250 to 270,000 hours, uh, man hours a year. Uh, on the golf courses to keep them in the condition that we do. Wow, Bob, that's a really big group. You must make up a significant part of the club budget. Uh, as we work, uh, and, and we work between two, 250 and 270,000 hours a year of payroll, as most would guess, uh, um, course number two comprises a great deal of that percentage. Uh, course number two is about 13% of our total payroll. And if you compare course two and course eight, and course four, those are the highest levels of payroll we have compared to course one, three, or five. Uh, and each of those courses are in the range of six to seven percent, uh, which is about half of the amount of payroll as course number two would be. Well, that's a really big group. So you must make up a significant part of the club budget. In addition to people, what else do you have to plan and budget for? The, the next greatest expenditure is our, is our uh, consumable products, uh, commodities, if you will, fertilizer, plant protectants, uh, and things such as that, that comprise about a million dollars of the budget, which is um, certainly the, the next greatest expenditure and distances itself from all the rest of them as well. So how large are the course properties in total? Uh, our course properties are, uh, we manage uh, over a thousand acres of turf um, within the golf courses. Uh, you'll see a slide, uh, this slide depicts uh, course number eight and course number six being offset from the main shop or the main club uh, as well as course number seven. So um, by the time we manage the, all the acres of the turf, including the hotel grounds and all, that's about a thousand acres. Um, and you'll see in the next slide uh, the, the breakdown of those total 961 acres. Uh, even though the greens on this slide um, are a very small percentage of the acreage, uh, they are probably 20% of the total uh, expenditures that we have maintaining the golf courses. Wow. So just to focus on one course in particular, the redesign of number two got a lot of visibility locally and throughout the golf world, as we all know. Other than the appearance, did it have any kind of impact on the thinking about other practices or initiatives? 
Well, it, it uh, the restoration of course number two was, uh, it, it really took on a life of its own once we got started with it and we had confidence in what we were doing and what Cor and Crenshaw were doing. Um, uh, at the end of the day, uh, we had a 40% reduction in turf on course number two. Now, that, and that sounds pretty significant, and it is uh, significant, uh, but if you look at in the sense of, of the water reduction, um, uh, certainly at least 60 or 70 percent reduction in water uh, with the elimination of that much turf, I think most importantly it allowed us to stop overseeding uh, the rest of the golf courses, which is exponential in uh, savings of water. And that's one aspect of our budget that I didn't mention earlier as well, is the uh, many courses, uh, a great expenditure they have is for water, and we're very fortunate to have Lake Pinehurst as one of our greatest, one of our greatest resources. Uh, so water consumption was reduced a great deal, and it gave us a platform uh, leading into the 2014 championships certainly with the USGA relationship as it is. Um, it gave us a platform to talk about sustainability, not only environmental sustainability, but also economic sustainability, which um, the, the program to do number two course uh, certainly uh, gave us a platform and energy and traction to go forward with what we've done over the recent years with certainly the cradle and 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 number three and number four uh, mm -hmm. that's uh, given us a lot of traction so Bob that's amazing um, and in addition to overseeing all of the golf courses you also oversee other areas of Pinehurst don't you well absolutely the uh, our grounds department does a terrific job within uh, all of the whole the entire campus from the hotel uh, the Carolina all the way down and around the Holly and the brewery and everything else but uh, so many people get to enjoy those that aren't playing golf that, uh, that and we're very proud uh, proud of our, our grounds department um, we have a uh, uh, we also cooperate with the village of Pinehurst in their pollinator program uh, for the uh, monarch butterflies which uh, uh, people enjoy that and enjoy the fact that we're doing that uh, Chris Burroughs, our ground superintendent, is the uh, he works with the beautification committee for the with the village of Pinehurst and uh, is really engaged within the community on the the uh, monarch butterf monarch butterfly as well as beautification efforts within the uh, uh, the village and then the uh, and we've been on an initiative the last several years of of reintroducing and planting new dogwood trees, red buds, uh, longleaf pines and hollies along the particularly along the highway corridors of, of the golf courses again for those people that to enjoy that may uh, would like to be playing here but not play golf uh, but they can still we're very proud of our curb appeal uh, the the cradle has been one of the greatest <laughs> improvements of curb appeal uh, that we've been involved in for many many years we also manage an 18 thousand square foot greenhouse. Uh, we grow all of our, our annuals in-house, in greenhouse uh, that we introduce each spring. And we have about one and a half acres of annual color beds throughout the campus and plant 62,000 annuals a year. One of the things we were most proud of this past year, uh, even though COVID, <laughs> it was caused somewhat by COVID, uh, but we were really, um, uh, grateful to be able to have the resources to continue our plantings uh, but at the same time uh, we're able to sell many of our uh, abundant supply uh, to the members that enjoy coming by and ban buying their summer, summer annuals and some of them in the fall and I see us doing that going forward with a, as a strategic plan uh, as a membership initiative. Uh, we manage eight acres of ornamentals uh, beds and, and various uh, shrub beds and, and flowering areas around the uh, around the campus and 12 acres of turf. So it's a a full-fledged operation uh, in in and of itself, uh, just the grounds department aspect. So Bob, we think of Pinehurst as a self-contained operation, 
Do you have any outside relations to include in your planning and activities? Well, I think we have a number of industry partners, um, whether they're vendors or you know, providers of, of product that we have. Uh, one of our primary partners is Toro, the Toro company. They're very supportive in all of our equipment needs and, uh, and championships as we go forward and, and, and they're a very good partner. One of the ones, that, one of the partners that we're particularly proud of is our relationship with BASF Corporation. Uh, they're a provider of a lot of the plant protectants that we use, but more importantly, they're a partner in a sense of, of, uh, of business partner. They, they, bring, they bring clients here and business people here and enjoy the resort and we're able to take them on tours and things. And certainly our relationship with the universities, uh, Turf Research Universities, NC State uh, particularly, as well as Clemson. Uh, we, have a, we have great relationships with that and, and from a turf research standpoint. And certainly as of late, uh, but it's also always has been the case, you know, our relationship with the, United, with the USGA, the, US, the United States Golf Association, especially the green section of research uh, is one of our absolute great, great partners. So in addition to the courses, what areas other areas of responsibility do you oversee? Well, uh, another uh, situation with outside uh, uh, relationships would be the regulatory agencies that we deal with. Um, uh, the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, many people uh, would, would know and recognize um, our relationship with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, if we talk about the RCW, the red collocated woodpecker trees that we have around the property, we're actually um, part of the Safe Harbor program with the United States Fish and Wildlife Service uh, and joined the Safe Harbor program in 1999. At the time, we were the largest privately owned parcel of land committed to the protection of the habitat for the uh, RCW. Uh, we continue to work with them really closely. Um, and that's one of our great relationships. Another relationship, uh, regulatory relationship, if you will, that people might not be aware of is the, um, the Department of Environmental Quality, which manages all of our dams. Uh, they inspect each of our dams uh, on an annual basis, as you'll see in the slide that's depicted there as well. And the Fish and Wildlife Safe Harbor sites uh, from a layover of the of our, our properties each of the round circles that you see on this slide is uh, the habitat circumference of, of each of the occupied trees uh, or where there's a cavity tree there's a certain amount of habitat that has to be protected in that and that's what that slide depicts Thank you so much for sharing all this information. These are informative items that I don't think a lot of our members are aware of, and we're appreciative of hearing it from you. But do you have any requests of members that might make your job easier? Uh, no, <laughs> not really. Patience and understanding, I guess, uh, uh, different times. But really and truly, I, I, I think uh, the more we can communicate with one another, my office literally is open seven days a week anytime anyone needs anything or they want to share a, a, an issue or a complaint or a compliment we're happy to take those as well but uh, but we appreciate the membership very much and certainly appreciate people such as yourself each of the committees uh, it's a thankless job I'm sure being on some of the committees uh, but we depend on uh, your feedback a great deal for making our programs going forward and uh, and hopefully addressing things as they, as they happen instead of letting them become an issue. It's, it's great to be able to be out in front of that and uh, do the best we can. Well, we sure appreciate all of your insights and all that you and your team do, do for us. Uh, we welcome you back as issue, issues arise, which we know they will. Yeah. <laughs> and we also want to wish you and your family a very, very happy holiday. Well, same to you as well. And, uh, and uh, it's been a blessed and challenging year, but we're blessed to uh, uh, be where we are with it now and, and look forward to next year. Happy New Year to everyone. Thanks, Bob.